We to this day do not know the precise mechanism whereby smoking causes lung cancer. But the statistics are so overwhelming that it would be irresponsible not to act. It's the same in climate. We don't understand every detailed connection between the human's alteration of the atmosphere and the climate response. But what we understand now makes it completely clear that the last 30 to 50 years of warming would not have happened without human activities, and it's going to get much more severe. So we have a case of a preponderance of evidence, a vast amount but we don't have it completely solid. So while scientists are arguing over the fine details, while being highly confident that warming is unequivocal and that it's very likely humans are responsible for most of the last 40 or 50 years of it, at the same time, we're projecting a future which, if we're very lucky, is only going to be one, one and a half degrees warmer, which means three times what we've warmed up now. I don't consider that a lucky world. And if we're unlucky, six or seven degrees Celsius warmer, which would be utterly catastrophic. Well, if you are faced with catastrophic possibilities, most of us, if we can afford it, buy insurance. The probability that my house or your house is going to burn down, at least in the, in the Western countries, is about 1% to 2%. Yet almost everybody has fire insurance. We don't need 50% chance. We just do it. It's complete nonsense to argue that we need to have absolute proof because we don't do that in military decisions, we don't do that in medical decisions, we don't do that in economic decisions. So why are we trying to do it in environmental decisions? Because special interests are against the precautionary principle. But this is a world of interests. And when those interests are special interests in burning fossil fuels that pollute the atmosphere, and to have controls on their emissions is going to hurt their business model and reduce their market share, they're going to fight back. And they don't always fight back clean. So they hire a few scientists who have PhDs, petroleum geologists, who, remember, are paid to explore for oil. And the usual oil companies are doing this. And then the media, <coughs> trained in political reporting, well, let's see, uh, to be fair, if we get the Democrat in the U.S., we have to get the Republican. In Europe, if we get labor, we have to get the conservatives. Well, in political reporting, that's fair. But in science, that's a distortion of reality. So what happens is the special interests get equal status at the bargaining table for ridiculously inferior positions because they take advantage of this political doctrine of balance. And then they spread confusion. They've been doing that for 35 years. It's finally starting to change where the world is getting wise to this trick. But we could have had climate policy 20 or 30 years ago when a number of us were talking to parliaments and ministers and Congress and so forth. And we have been delayed 20, 30 years while the problem has been framed as too uncertain for policy by those people who didn't want policy because they wanted to protect their market share.